Money is important. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. Let me repeat, money is important. Now, I start this video off saying that money is important as a business owner, an entrepreneur, broker, as a coach, as a speaker, but most importantly, as a Christian. And there are all types of things, myths, lies surrounding the importance of money as believers, as business owners who wrestle with this idea of our faith and business being separate. Well, my favorite verse next to Psalm 4610 is Proverbs 1816. And it says, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great or great men. So that means that the giftings that we have as believers, those God-given gifts are supposed to bring us before great men, great people, great companies, great business owners who can pay us for our services. Now, here's where I want to um, ask you. Here's what I want to ask you. Are your gifts bringing you before great men and people? If not, could it be that you might not be fully utilizing the God-given gifts that um, he has bestowed in us and upon us? Now, when it comes to money, especially as believers, the one we hear all the time is 1 Timothy 6, 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, that's what the word says. But here's where I want to challenge you as a believer and a business owner or someone who um, might be wrestling with this idea that money is important as a Christian, right? Um, if you believe any of God's word, if you believe 1 Timothy 6, 10, where it says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, then you must believe Proverbs 18, 16, that says a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. This thing that we believe is not a buffet. We can't pick and choose 1 Timothy. We can't choose John 3, 16 and throw the book of Revelation out the window. So as a believer, maybe you're a business owner who is a believer in God's word, who follows Christianity, we're going to look at right now some things that are important for us to remember so that while the enemy wants us to believe that maybe we're supposed to live a life of destitution, maybe we're supposed to lack or we're supposed to be beggars and supposed to live modest lifestyle, that is not what the word says. Because when it comes to God's people, us, you and I as brothers and sisters, Here's what it talks about stewardship. Understand that as Christian business owners, you are entrusted with resources to manage wisely, right? Here's what that means. God has all of these resources. He can give them to any and everyone. Why wouldn't he give them to us as a good, good father? Luke 16, 10 says, one who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. Now you might be thinking in faith or in your godly um, abilities. Maybe you're thinking in your discipleship journey. But what about these physical resources? What about these financial resources that God has bestowed upon us? Are we being faithful with the $2 or the $100 or the 1000 so that we can be trusted with much? We're going to talk about a few of the verses a little later that talks about, and well, let's jump into it right now. Matthew 25, 21, we hear all the time, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. The idea of faithfulness here, remember we talked about the, or the Bible talks about the talents or the menas. Um, the whole thing about being faithful is not meaning that you kept and held on to, because that's what the one did that he took away from. Faithfulness is an idea of multiplication, of abundance, right? So you were faithful, you multiplied that which has been given to you by God our Father. Now I'm going to give you more, not so that you can hoard and love it, but because you can be a good steward and go into this next point that we're going to talk about, and that's impact. God has put us here, you and I, brothers and sisters, to impact the world for good. 
If we are not impacting the world for good, if we don't have the finances, the resources, now we might have the heart, but what did Jay-Z say? He said, I can't help the poor if I'm one of them. And here's what blows my mind. The world does a better job at utilizing and embracing these biblical principles than we as believers do. If Jay-Z can quote it and make a hot song, then why wouldn't we live the life so that we can have greater impact? It's our responsibility to realize that money can be a tool for a positive impact, and then we can support our community and fulfill your purpose. Now, you're probably going to say, Neil, my purpose isn't tied to money. I agree with you, but here's what I know. Having money makes it easier to fulfill your purpose because people listen to individuals with money. Once you have the resources, you can go and you can do things that without those financial resources, you could not do. Even Jesus's ministry here on earth, who was it supported by? It was supported by many women, wealthy women who gave to his ministry. But we don't talk about that in our daily lives when we're looking at God's word and when we are picking which part of the buffet line we want to look at. So 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 7, God loves a cheerful giver. How can we give what we don't have? Now, God is not going to ask you for anything yet that you don't have. But what he is saying, if you have, you can give. How are we going to feed the homeless? How are we going to take care of the widows and the orphans? That's the church's job. It's not the government's job, ladies and gentlemen. That's why money is important, especially for believers and Christian business owners. Proverbs eleven twenty five: 25, a, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will themselves be refreshed. How generous are you? Do you have the heart of God? We always talking about being the hands and feet, right? Well, are your hands giving, pouring out, sharing, or are your hands saying, well, I serve God, but I might not have to give. We have a responsibility. There's a responsibility that as Christian, as believing business owners, that we must embrace. Um, wealth means that we have to embrace the idea to further God's kingdom and bless others. Deuteronomy 8.18, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Now, we look at the wealthy. If we're being totally honest, we look at the wealthy and maybe we judge or we point fingers, but all things, all abilities to produce wealth are given by God our Father. The lack thereof means that we are not doing those things in alignment to God's word to um, live in the abundance that he has promised. First Timothy 6, 17 through 19, command those who are rich in this present world to put their hope in God, be rich in good deeds. Now that's where many of us want to live. Well, I might not be rich. I might not live a life of abundance, but I'm doing good deeds. No. Well, the word says that command those who are rich in this present time to also do good deeds. Let's put our money to use. I remind you, money is important. And if anyone tells you otherwise, ask them to go to the word and show you where it says that having money, having resources, being blessed by God is a bad thing. If they do show you something, I'm going to ask you to read the entire chapter. Read it in context. Go through because God is a God of abundance, of more than enough, exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all we can ask or think running over into our lap so that we can give to others. We must embrace an abundance mindset. Do you have an abundance mindset? Um, believe that God's provision um, and that he does and will open doors. The Bible, God's word says that he will open the windows of heaven to pour out more blessings than you and I have room enough to receive. That's a lot of blessings. The windows of heaven, pour out all the blessings that we don't have room enough to receive so that when they run into our lap that we have to give, that we have to share, that people have to know that this is something bigger than you and I. 
right? Are we having an abundance mindset? Philippians 4.19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. What level of riches do you think that your God has? Because here's what I know, right? As sure as I know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, I know that my God owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the hill and the grass that they eat. If he owns everything, we trust him with our eternity. But then when it comes to our finances, our well-being, our abundance, we say, well, maybe if I just believe that God has given each of us gifts that we are to utilize for his glory, right? So that we can impact the world, not look left and right and wait for someone else to change. Psalm 23, 1, we hear it all the time. Maybe it's the first verse that you learned. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It doesn't say anything after that. It doesn't say, I shall not want for water and bread. It says, I shall not want. That means your needs are met. He will give us the desires of our heart if our first heart's desire is on him. We have a responsibility to be innovative and creative. Recognize your creative potential to generate wealth and contribute to society. As a Christian, I believe that how we do anything is how we do everything. We have an innovative and creative spirit in us because our God is the creator. So Exodus 35, 35 says, he has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work and in, as engravers, designers, embroiders in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen and weavers, all of them skilled workers and designers. He could say, the context of Exodus 35, 35 today, he's created us to be business owners, entrepreneurs, speakers, coaches, uh, coaches. Maybe he's had us be real estate agents, finance individuals. Uh, maybe he's called you to be a teacher. Maybe he's called you to be a music producer, an actress, right? Whatever it is, God has given us these multitude of skills. Why? Not for us to beg, borrow, steal, and kill, but for us to be before great men. Have you understood yet? Do you embrace this idea that money is important? Now, we hear all the time that God talks, or Jesus, or that God talks about money in the Bible more than love or anything else. Well, here's what we know. Oftentimes, we've allowed the world to pervert that and make it sound like it's negative. Right. They'll say, well, he speaks about money more than anything else because he knows how important it was. And then they'll come back with that for the love of money is the root of all evil. No. Well, what about Proverbs 13, 22, when he says a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children? Those are your grandkids. If I ask you a loving, sincere, but tough question right now, do you have an inheritance for your grandchildren right now? Here's what Proverbs 13, 22, a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. Now, I'm not here to question your morality. I just know what God words, God's word says about a good person, about the type of person who leaves their grandchildren uh, inheritance. Faith and works. Understand that your faith and business are not separate entities. They intersect. Why? to glorify God, our Father. Colossians 3, 23 and 24, whatever you do, whatever you do, cleaning floors, walking dogs, teaching kids, collecting trash, being a doctor, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Is that the way you go about your work? Is that the way you go about your profession? Is that how you go about your daily task? Do you skip into work like I do? Why? Because I do it as if I'm working for the glory of God, not as two human masters. Are you whistling? Are you waking up exciting to do it? One, I know that money is important. Two, I know that I have a responsibility to use the gifts that God has given me for the glorification of him. And three, I know I want others to see that it's pretty cool to be a Christian, that I can be a business owner, a leader, an entrepreneur, a God follower, and still live a life of abundance. Empower others through job creation and opportunities. 
right? Reflect God's love for his people by maybe creating something. We talked about the innovation and creativity. How many people do you employ? Do you have a dream in your heart or in your head where you're supposed to build something not for you, but maybe for those lost, maybe for those individuals, that society that the government has um, considered outcast or downtrodden? Maybe it's your responsibility not to look to the left or to the right. Maybe your job is to create job opportunities, to create housing, to create home ownership, right? I don't know what God has put in your heart, but I know that he's put something there, right? And then uh, finally, gener generational blessings. Realize that your financial success, my financial success can extend blessings to future generations. And here's what Psalm 112.2 says. The children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed, right? So when you think about the generations to follow you, much like your children's children, will they be blessed because of the financial difference that you've made today? If not, why not? I just believe that God has put something in each of us to be bigger than ourselves. So big, in fact, that when people look at you and I that know who we are, what we've done, where we've been, where we've come from, they can say there's no way but God in order for her or for him to have this type of success. So here's what I want to remind you of. Remember, as Christian business owners, as entrepreneurs, as believers, your pursuit of financial success is not just about your personal gain, but also about fulfilling God's purpose in your life and the lives of those that you are going to come in contact with, even if you may never, ever meet them face to face. I know that if you're like me, you've got something burning on the inside that you can't hold in. Like Joshua said, that fire shut up in your bones. Now, here's what I need. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to comment. Let me know what you're going to do in order to make more resources. Maybe you need to challenge yourself or take a step forward in being obedient to God's calling in your life. Maybe you need to distance yourself, put some barriers up between those naysayers, maybe those negative Nancys, uncles, family members, or friends who are telling you that, no, as a believer, you're supposed to live a meek and humble life. Meekness is not weakness nor vice versa, but that's another video. I would love to hear what you have to say in the comment section. Remember that we always want your feedback. Share this uh, content with someone who might need to hear that money is important, especially for the brothers and sisters of Christ. Now, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel because we've got a lot of good stuff and I don't want you to miss it. Be sure to hit that bell to turn the notification symbol on. And remember, most importantly, that I love you, God loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And until the next time I see you or you see me, don't be average, be world-renowned. Peace.